We recently came back from our Mediterranean cruise and let's face it, planning a Mediterranean cruise is a bucket list cruise for many of us. So to be perfectly honest, I wasn't sure how a seven day Mediterranean cruise would live up to my hopes and my expectations. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, if you are considering going on a Mediterranean cruise or maybe you have one planned for the future, I hope that this video will be helpful. I'm gonna share all of the information about our seven day Mediterranean cruise on board the absolutely beautiful Enchanted Princess. Now, by the way, even though I've been on about 10 princess cruises, this was my very first time sailing with princess in the Mediterranean. I usually have sailed with them in the Caribbean and I wasn't really sure what to expect both in terms of the activities, the demographic and the food on board. Plus it was seven days. Would that really be enough time to actually explore, feel and enjoy all of the different Mediterranean cruise ports of call. Now I'm happy to say that we did have an absolutely wonderful time on board, but I have taken note of many of your questions and I will share that information as well as some tips along the way. Now we were invited and hosted by Princess Cruises on a press trip. However, as always, all of my thoughts and opinions are my own. Now, before I get started, I did want to mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. So we were on board the Enchanted Princess, which is one of Princess Cruises' newest cruise ships. At 145,000 tons, it holds approximately 3,600 passengers and 1,300 crew. Now our seven day Mediterranean cruise started in Barcelona and ended in Rome, which it turned out was really perfect because it gave us a couple of days to explore before our cruise. We did fly in early and we stayed an additional two days in Rome as well. So it really gave us that additional time to explore those bigger cities. Our ports of call were Gibraltar, Marseille, Genoa, and Livorno, which is a gateway to Florence and Pisa. Now, don't worry, I will share what we did in our cruise ports of call, including one thing that was a little bit of a regret or a bad experience. I don't want you to make it, so I will share that warning for you. Embarkation day, we embarked on our cruise in Barcelona and the morning of our cruise, we actually did a walking tour in Barcelona. So we got to see the Gothic quarter and visit La Bocaria market. Now, little tip, La Bocaria market, you wanna go there very early in the morning. So don't go there around lunchtime. It really does get very busy, but very interesting. Now try to go in even a day or two before the hotel that we stayed in was H10 Casanova with a rooftop pool that we really enjoyed. Now, embarkation at the Barcelona cruise terminal was fast and easy. We picked up our medallion, which instead of a cruise card, Princess does use the medallion. A little bit more information on that later on in the video. But we got on board. We went right away to do our muster drill safety check-in. And then we headed to Good Spirits for our traditional embarkation day mimosas. Now, when we boarded the Enchanted Princess, we were absolutely struck by how gorgeous this cruise ship is. We entered in through the Piazza, which is basically like an atrium or the central hub of the cruise ship. And we navigated our way to our cabins from there. Now, embarkation day is always fun for me, but a little bit hectic. So we quickly dropped off our bags, checked out our balcony cabin. By the way, we were in a standard balcony cabin for three. And then we decided we would explore the ship before taking in sail away. Now, I wasn't sure what to expect from Sail Away, especially in the Mediterranean, but right away I could tell there was a vibe. There was a live band playing. The cruise director was there having fun with the activity staff. There were people dancing. There were people swimming. The passengers were there to have an amazing cruise. Now, our first full day on board the Enchanted Princess was a sea day. So that was a great day to try some of the different activities as well as to explore the cruise ship. Now the Enchanted Princess has four pools. So it has two pools that are in the center of the cruise ship, basically the main pools. And that's where most of the activities are going on. There's actually a big screen. So there's movies that are playing at nighttime. And even during the day, there can be a game. There was a game during our cruise. There are even some exercises that are going on on the big screen in the morning that some people are participating in. And that's where you'll find the poolside pizza 
and the burgers at the grill as well. Now, in addition to the main pool, there is a pool that is at the very aft. Now, if you go right away early in the morning, uh, that view is just gorgeous and hardly anybody will be in that pool. And basically it's sort of an infinity pool, just gorgeous. Now at the front, there is a pool that is a hidden gem. I think a lot of people might think that this pool is part of the sanctuary or not included, but it is included. It's an adult only retreat pool. This pool was calm, a little bit of a, a secret place because it was always pretty quiet. Now on the deck right above the retreat pool, you do have cabanas. Those are all included. It's a great place to relax, read, or just get a little sun. Now, right in front of the retreat pool, you do have the adult only sanctuary. Now this area does come at an extra cost, but it is so sought after that something that you'll want to do is if you do want to reserve any time in the sanctuary, you have to do that once you're on board. You'll want to go right away. So even maybe even before the mustard drill, go right away and reserve your spot in the sanctuary. Now something that surprised me on the Enchanted Princess, especially on our first sea day, was how active things were on the cruise ship, there were people that were playing pickleball, people that were walking or jogging, and people that were at the gym. Now we actually tried out a stretch class on our sea day. Yes, Frank and Ethan did too, and we really did enjoy it. I always say that cruising and traveling is really about trying new experiences, and this was definitely something new for us as a family activity. Now, even if you're not somebody who wants to be hanging out on the Lido deck by the pool, or maybe playing mini golf, there was a lot to do on the interior of the cruise ship. Now, as we walked through the piazza during the day, you could find dance classes at times, you could find demonstrations and you could find games of the crew against the passengers. Now one of the lounges that was always busy was the live studio and that's where there were different game shows and trivia. And this was something that I really noticed on board our Princess cruise ship. There really was something for everybody to do. Now, right outside the live studio, that's where you'll find the help desk for the medallion. Now, a lot of people, if you've cruised before with Princess, then you know about the medallion. But if it's the very first time that you're cruising with Princess, then the medallion is going to be a little bit new. So I'll just show you. So the medallion is basically a quarter size disc. It's very light and it basically replaces a key card or a cruise card. So every time you go and you get coffee or you buy something in the store or you get off the cruise ship or you get back on the cruise ship, this is basically going to be what you show or you tap or even when you're in close proximity, the crew will know that you are there and they're going to be able to process whatever you do purchase. Now it really is very simple to use on board they do have the medallion class app as well. Now, sometimes it can be a little bit glitchy before you get on board the cruise ship, but on board the cruise ship, it does really work just fine. But if you are having any issues, then simply ask somebody at guest services or at the help desk. Now, by the way, the medallion is free and it does come on a lanyard. However, if you do wanna purchase any accessories, so like a watch band or a bracelet or a clip, to wear on your clothing, you can do that right on board or you can do that before your cruise on the Princess website. Entertainment and food. So just like the daytime, there was always something going on at evening time. And just to let you know, something that you'll get in your cabin is you are going to get a daily planner where you can take a look at all of the activities and the opening hours, the restaurants, dining, all of that you will be able to see on your planner or you can also take a look on your app on your phone. Now in the evening, we did see one production show with a lot of modern music. That was a lot of fun. We also really enjoyed checking out the live band. The band that was on board our cruise ship was Excite. They were just fabulous. And as well, there was another band in O'Malley's, which is the Irish Pub. That was a little bit of a hidden gem. I would definitely get a seat there if you know that they're playing, for instance, at eight o'clock in the evening. Go there at seven or 7.30, get a table. It is so well worth it, a lot of fun. The food. Now, if you're anything like me, you're just happy that somebody else is cooking and cleaning, but the food on board was really very good. So from the casual options, including the International Cafe, which I can confirm has an absolutely amazing tomato and mozzarella sandwich, very good after an excursion to the buffet, which is nice and spacious and set up in stations. I like that because there are never really long lineups or queues, which is a little bit of my pet peeve on cruises, but they have a lot of really nice options for breakfast, for lunch, 
even for snacks during the day. Now next to the pool, you have pizza. I can confirm that it is really good pizza. You have a poolside grill and you also have Swirls, the ice cream station. Now there are also some casual dining options that do have an extra cost. Although if you have Princess Plus or you have Princess Premier, then you do have certain meals that are included. So we did eat at Gigi's by Alfredo's. We had pizza, we had calzone, a caprese salad. I can confirm that this was very good. And the other place that we also ate at was the sushi restaurant. We decided instead of going to dinner in the main dining room or in a specialty restaurant one night that we would go there and that was absolutely delicious. Now O'Malley's has pub style food and that's well worth it whether it's for lunch or perhaps for a casual dinner. Now in the evening, we also ate in the main dining room as well as in some of the specialty restaurants. The service was really good and something that we came to find out during our cruise is the head of culinary arts for Princess Cruises is now Rudy Sodeman. Now he was actually on board our cruise and he shared some of the ways that the food on board Princess is changing and evolving. As a matter of fact, one of the things that he did while he was on board is he had a cooking demonstration during the day on a sea day and we got to make or learn how to make his homemade berry souffle, which by the way, you could eat at the Catch by Rudy. It's absolutely delicious. Now the Catch by Rudy is a new specialty restaurant. I've never eaten there before, but the decor and the entire atmosphere, as well as of course the food was absolutely delicious. Now Sabatini's was very interesting because it now is in a much more open space. The food was so good. And again, the presentation was just exquisite. Now a new experience that we had a chance to try. And if you are looking for something that is a really special dining experience, I highly recommend this. It is the Camus Vineyards Winemaker Dinner. Now, if you love food and you love wine, you're going to absolutely love the combination of this. Now, the meal I ate was seared king salmon with giant prawn. Not only was this exquisite to look at, but that prawn was one of the most delicious things that I've ever had on a cruise. Now, even though there's an extra cost, I think that this is one of the specialty dinners that's definitely well worth it. Now, by the way, I did wanna mention that even though some of the restaurants that I mentioned did have an extra cost for the food, and for the experience that as we were walking through the buffet, something that did surprise me one evening, it was around five o'clock PM. We weren't yet ready for dinner. Well, as we walked through, there were shrimp cocktails that were there in the buffet. And it did just remind me that even the included food was great on our cruise formal nights and the dress code. Now, when it comes to the dress code on princess, you can be pretty relaxed because overall it is a relaxed dress code. So basically it's casual or smart casual for most evenings. Now you do also have a formal night on our cruise. The formal night was the second evening. And I have to say it is less formal than in the past, but I would say that most people did definitely dress up. It was really nice. There was a champagne waterfall, the captain, as well as the officers were there and there was a live band playing. Now there was also a second formal night where the dress code was white and gold. And white and gold, by the way, were really only suggestions, but a lot of people did wear white. So I do suggest that you bring that on your cruise. Okay, switching gears, let's get off the cruise ship and explore the ports before we come back on the cruise ship, talk about the demographic, the service, and who I think this cruise ship is for. Gibraltar. When we got off our cruise ship in Gibraltar, we boarded our tour bus for a little tour. We stopped at a lighthouse. We heard about some of the sites and we did something that I have never done before in terms of an excursion. And it was a wine pairing and little nibbles or snacks or tapas. It was really good. We sat on the rooftop terrace of a local business, had a chance to try some of the different wines and the food that was freshly prepared, talk with some of the other passengers on our cruise ship. This was definitely an excursion that I would try and recommend repeat again. Marseille. Now in Marseille, I really debated about where we should go and what we should do, but we finally decided to go and visit the Chateau Lourmarin. This was really picturesque just to see that beautiful French countryside. It, it was absolutely beautiful. So picturesque, definitely a photo op at every corner. After that, we stopped in at a little village that was called Roussignol. We actually had a little bit of ice cream there. I had an ice cream that was a lavender flavor because I did ask the shopkeeper what is the most popular flavor and she did tell me that lavender was. As well, we also bought some souvenirs, everything lavender, of course. 
Now, along the way during our bus ride, we had an informative tour guide who also explained to us a little bit more of the region, what it is known for, including truffles. Now, before our tour ended, we had a nice lunch with wine and a goat cheese tart that I really liked before we headed back to the cruise ship. Genoa. Now, I hate to play favorites, but our port day in Genoa might have been our favorite day of the cruise. We were able to go to the town of Rapello, to Santa Margarita, and to Portofino. Oh my goodness, what incredible, beautiful Italian towns. Now, we actually took a boat over as part of the tour from Santa Margarita. Portofino is as pretty as it looks well on TikTok. It is just absolutely beautiful. Now, we did end up stopping at a little restaurant. I apologize, I don't remember the name, but I have a feeling they're just all wonderful and good. And basically, we had some pesto pasta, some house wine, it was absolutely wonderful. Now, after we left Portofino, we had about an hour to spend in Santa Margarita. And I can tell you, it was such a hot day that in the end, my son Ethan ended up going for a swim. So that's a little bit of a tip. If you do go on that tour and you go during the summer, even though the beaches are definitely not like they are in the Caribbean, you actually have little rocks on the beach. The water is still very beautiful. So you may want to bring a bathing suit with you on your tour. Livorno. So this is where we actually made a little bit of a mistake. Now, what we did in Livorno is because we had been to Florence and Pisa before, what we decided to do was actually spend a little bit of time in Livorno before heading back to the cruise ship, spending a little bit of time on board the cruise ship, doing a little bit of filming and that kind of thing. So we did take the free shuttle into Livorno and we thought, well, we could stop at a little local restaurant for pizza. So if you've made it to this point in the video, I am gonna share with you probably the one negative point about our cruise. And this was the pizza that we were served in Livorno. Now, please let me know down in the comments below what you think this pizza looked like because yes, it tasted just like that. Now, the lesson that we learned is when you are called into the restaurant, that is not the way to find a good Italian restaurant. So in any case, lesson learned, a lot of tourists were stopping there and had a similar experience, unfortunately. Now, the good thing is that on this seven day Mediterranean cruise, our ports didn't end there because we did end our cruise in Rome and we decided to stay two additional days in Rome. Now, the hotel that we stayed in was called Hotel Abruzzi. We did really like the hotel. It was right across from the Pantheon, so really a perfect location within about 10 to 15 minutes from many of the historic sites. The only thing that I would say is that it is in an old building. It's basically a boutique hotel, so you do have a lot of stairs or otherwise you have to really squish into a very teeny elevator. So that is really the only negative, but we really did like the location. Now, of course, I do have a lot more to share about the cruise ports, especially Barcelona and Rome, but I don't wanna make this video too long. So if you would like to see another video with tips about the cruise ports, please let me know down in the comments below. The crew and the service. Now, I always think that the crew could either make or break a cruise. It really is such an important factor in a cruise. Well, the crew on board the Enchanted Princess were helpful, were friendly, were service oriented, and they honestly seemed like they were really having a very good time with the passengers and with each other. It was really a great atmosphere on board this cruise ship. Our cabin attendant was excellent. He did a phenomenal job keeping our room clean. Also with our turndown service in the evening time, which we really did appreciate, especially since we are three people in the cabin. He also accommodated some of my special requests like getting extra hangers. The waiters, the bartenders, and the baristas at the International Cafe, yes, I love my coffee, they all did an excellent job. And one of the things that I really like best is when we were coming back to our cruise, we always had these nice cold cloths that were given to us and citrus water. It might sound like a little thing, but it is so nice to be welcomed back to your cruise ship in that way. So what was the demographic like and who do I think this cruise ship was for? Now we were on a summer Mediterranean cruise. So I think that the age definitely skews a little bit younger than perhaps some longer Mediterranean cruises that might be in April or October as an example. So there were some families on board. Now, if I had to guess, I'd say the average age was probably somewhere between 40, maybe 45 and 50, with some people a little bit younger into their 30s and some people a little bit older into their 60s and 70s and of course beyond. Now, one thing I will say about Princess Cruises is I do think that there are some things that are changing. And if you're expecting a boring cruise, 
this is definitely not a boring cruise. There were definitely things that were happening in the Piazza in particular, but even in some of the different areas of the cruise ship to midnight, even to 1 a.m. and even till a little bit later. So who do I think this cruise is for? Well, a Mediterranean cruise, I do think is a little bit of an active cruise. And of course, there are always different levels of activity that you could do on a cruise ship. So that is something good, but it is something to be aware of that many of the different Mediterranean cruise ports of call, that there is a lot of walking involved. So if you don't wanna walk that much, it is a good idea to maybe really look at some of the excursions and to take some of the excursions that are a little bit more on a bus than some of the walking. And of course, as much as you can take the excursions with the cruise line, if you are somebody who prefers to explore on your own, you just need to do a little bit of research as to how to take the hop on hop off bus in some of the different cruise ports of call, or even sometimes the public transportation. And that's also a possibility in some ports. Now, by the way, if you're wondering what to pack for a Mediterranean cruise, or you need some other cruise tips about Mediterranean cruises, I am gonna leave the playlist of Mediterranean cruises right at the end of this video. And I'd love to hear from you. Please let me know if you've been on a Mediterranean cruise before, or if you're planning a Mediterranean cruise at the moment, please let me know down in the comments below. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.